Good morning, students. How are you today? Hope you're doing great. Today we have a very interesting project for you to work on. It's going to be an engineering challenge. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. It's been very successful in the past, and I'm sure that you will have just as much fun when you try it out. Why am I dressed like this? It's a solution to a problem. If I had to worry about uh, the COVID-19 virus, I'd have to gear up. I'd have to put on some safety gear like this. So a shield, some protective goggles, a mask. I would have to put on all those things in order to be safe. And that's what I want you to be. I want you to be safe. So make sure that you wear a mask whenever you go out. Make sure that you look at social distancing, stay six feet apart from people, and wash your hands regularly. Don't get close to any groups that are larger than 10 people and try to be safe as possible. So I want you to be safe. All right, so let's see what our challenge is for today. Our challenge today comes from the uh, Next Generation Science Standards. In, in particular, it's standard number four, which is engineering design. I give you a, a type of problem, and then you have to solve it. And there's some steps that you will learn that will help you solve any engineering problem in the future. The first one is to make sure you understand the problem, then go research it, so you get some different solutions to your problem, the third thing is to implement it and see if it works, and then enhance it and try it again, enhance it and try it again, and then lastly, document what worked. So anytime you have an engineering design problem, that's what you'll do. In the future, we'll have some other engineering problems for you to do, like making a bridge across a span, how much weight can it hold up? Or making a crane and you have it sticking out, how much weight can it pick up? And that would be a crane one, a tower, where you're going to grow, you're going to make a tower out of the materials provided, and how tall can you get it before it starts tipping over? So these are engineering problems that you'll be able to solve, because you know how to do it now. You'll do it by defining the problem, understanding the various solutions that you can use, and then picking one and working on it, and seeing if it works, enhance it and try it again, and then finally document it and that's what you're going to do you have three deliverables that you're going to be doing so the next generation science standard that you're using for engineering design states that you're supposed to develop a model and then generate data for interactive testing or in english make a <laughs> make a solution for an engineering problem and test it so that's what you're going to do the second thing that you need to do for a deliverable is make a slideshow. The slideshow is going to have the information that you use in order to do this project. So right off the bat, you need to start making the slideshow. It's going to have six slides that you need to have. The first slide is going to be an introduction. You have your title, you got your name on it, and it's got a nice picture of the race car, uh, mousetrap race car. The second thing is going to be three slides of various engineering designs that you could use to make that car. The fourth thing would be the one that you're going to choose in order to make a race car. And then the final slide is going to be the, the end. So it's like the, similar to the first one where it has your introduction, it has your name, it has a picture, and it has the end on it. So you have a beginning, a middle, and an end to your slideshow. The third thing that you need to make is a reflections document. So you're going to make a Google Doc, and in that you're going to answer some questions about the Google Doc. Uh, what was your engineering challenge, first of all? What were possible solutions that you could have used in order to build this thing? And then thirdly, what did you choose in order to make this thing, and how well did it work out? The other thing I just want to do is how much, what could you do to make this a better result for your document for your project the last thing is how can you use this experience to tackle other future engineering design problems so let's talk about the the mousetrap race car which you're going to make here's an example of one which is pretty cool this mousetrap race car as you can tell is using cd disc disc for the wheels 
It has a wooden axle. That's a skewer. It has a cardboard body. And here's your mousetrap that it's going to use. Now the mousetrap is connected to this lever. So when the mousetrap snaps shut, which would be like this, it snaps shut, it's pulling a string. Now you could be using a, a string that is a regular string, or you can use, like this one, fishing line. And this attaches to the back axle. So it goes on the back axle, like this. And then you wind it up, like that. And that pulls up the lever. And eventually you'll have it all the way down to, this, to the bottom. Now when you let it go, this lever swings up and pulls the string, pulls the string, which pulls the wheel back here, the axle, and makes it spin and off your race car goes. So you have various challenges when you're making this because there's various problems associated with it. For one, you don't want your wheels to touch against the body or else it'll have drag and your wheels won't be able to go very far. So they put a little piece of straw here to keep it away from the wheel and touching the body. They put a little notch on the axle so it would be easier to take this loop and stick it over it so that you can wind it up easier. The other thing is they used a long stick here. It was actually part of an old meter stick that we had. And they attached it to the mouse trap so that it would give it more leverage. Because just the tiny mouse trap itself only comes out this far, right? But if you extend it, now you get even more pressure and more strength pulling on that string so that it will make it go faster and farther. Because it's pulling on it longer than it would with just a straight mouse trap by itself. So this is a really good improvement on here. Now, I've had kids that were not doing so well in class, and our class has one-third of them are getting A's and B's, so they're very proficient and they can do really well. They're advanced. And we have another third of the class who is probably just what we call proficient, C's and B's, and they get the job done and they do really well. And then the last third of our class needs a little more assistance. But what I've found in my experience is that that last group usually <laughs> does better than the other groups because for some reason doing a hands-on project like this is a lot more entertaining and they really love to do it so that's what they do they make a project and they do it extra now if we need modifications we can do that we can do a modifications where maybe you just do a, a graphic where you draw all the parts and then you say how you're going to put it together and make a mousetrap race car That'd be one modification. Another one would be looking at the deliverables, the slideshow and the uh, 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 reference file, reflection file, that maybe we can adjust that so that you don't have to do all of it, but you can do a little bit of it. Or maybe you could do a podcast where you tell how to do it. Or you can get somebody else to help you build it. Get a, a parent or a sibling or a para to help you build the thing. And then you, extract, you instruct them how to do it, and then they put it together, and then you've got it. So it'd be pretty easy that way. So we can have modifications in this project, but like I said, my experience has been that you really don't need it, that you do well without having to worry about a modification. But if you do, we have them available for you. Okay. So what the mousetrap race car has to do, it has to go two meters. So there's a meter, that's a meter stick, right? That's like 39 inches. 39 inches or six foot six, it has to go. So your mouse trap would be on the floor, you start it and it has to travel at least the six feet six inches for an A. Not that hard, really. It's most fun is, is just trying to put this thing together because you'll enjoy it. I know I did watching and helping students do that. In the future, I'll be giving you a timeline so as to what you should be having done by each day. Like for instance, we need to start with the uh, slideshow. And I would recommend just make the five slides already. Put your name and title and a picture on the first one. Put the same thing on the last one and put the end and then you got your slideshow set up. 
then you just take the three that you want to <clears throat> put different race car drives on it and then the, the one that you picked with its materials list put that on there and then you'll be good right so I think that covers it pretty well um, as far as the summary goes here for how we're doing this project you're making a mousetrap race car you're making a slideshow and you're making a reflections paper I'll be giving you a timeline and a rubric later in other videos that we're going to do to help support you and I'll be checking with you regularly to find out how it's going so you got some problems you can talk to me about it and I'd recommend if you could to work with other students you could do a zoom with them or a, uh, a Google meeting and talk to them or just call them on the phone or work together you don't have to be separate you can put your masks on you can work together and you'll be able to do this. So let's try that out, okay? Let's put it together. Let's have some fun. Let's do some science from Steve, the science guy. All right? <laughs>